Okay, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for connecting on this call. We are uh, learning about keys to supernatural ministry. Um, we have recently studied about the anointing, how the power of God works through a willing vessel of God. And in the last class, we touched upon the presence of God and the glory of God. And we try to understand you know, different aspects of it. So uh, I'll just touch upon presence and glory a little bit. And then today we will uh, also look at the remaining two keys, uh, proclamation, which is key seven, and persistence, which is key eight. Um, uh, and uh, I know I haven't posted uh, your, uh, or, or I think the key is already posted, right? I posted three keys together in the last uh, set of notes. So uh, you should be able to access it. OK, yeah, I think you have it. All right, so you can just have a look at it while uh, you know I, I continue with sharing what I have. Uh, let's first begin with prayer, though. So uh, anyone here, could you please lead in prayer before we get started? Let's pray. Father Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing us here together to learn your word. We thank you because you are a way maker, you promise keeper, and you are the light in the darkness. We pray that all that we are going to learn, let it take away darkness that spring prevents the supernatural flow in our life. We pray that all this let it also impact in the life of the community that we are going to share your word to. We pray and seal this in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Paul. I always hesitate to ask, uh, uh, you know, Brother Paul or anyone else from, uh, you know, the nations that you come from because it must be pretty early, isn't it? What time is it there? It is eight. Oh, it's eight. Okay, okay. Not bad. Not bad. It's eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. All right. Sure. Uh, thank you for praying. Uh, so I was saying that uh, we are going to look at presence uh, and glory just a, a little bit more. So in the last class, we, we said that God has promised uh, his presence where two or three are gathered uh, in the name of Jesus. When we uh, talk about the presence of God, we do not really see it or, you know, in the natural, we are not able to uh, perceive it. But the presence of God is something which can be spiritually recognized. Um, we also said that the presence of God is varying you know, in, in its uh, intensity and strength. Now, we know that God is an omnipresent God. However, uh, as believers, we can experience a stronger presence of God and presence of the Holy Spirit as we employ our faith uh, in what God's word has spoken. So, we uh, know that there will be an increased manifestation of the presence of God when we are gathered in his name. There will be an increased manifestation of the presence of God when we praise because God has promised, God has promised that he will be present you know, where, where praise is. So uh, in this manner, we, we understand that, you know, God's uh, presence, the intensity of that presence can increase and we can experience it. And why are we so concerned about the presence of God? We saw in 1 Corinthians 5, 4, that where the presence of the Lord is, his power is there. So we want to uh, engage with the Lord, but we also know that his power will engage in our lives and uh, that is also something that you know we we want to experience and since we are talking about the keys to supernatural ministry we need the power of god's presence in our midst uh, and and so we seek after that presence of god 
we also uh, talked about the fact that uh, the presence of God manifests in various ways. You know, we said that the Israelites, the children of Israel, they had the uh, the fire of the presence of God. They had the the cloud of the presence of God. We are, see other manifestations such as rain, such as light, and when the expression of the presence of God is in these ways, we can understand what God is doing based on the expression of the presence of God. For example, if we take the fire of God's presence uh, for the children of Israel, it, it meant uh, illumination, it meant protection of, of the community as they, they journeyed along. So even today, when we have a manifestation of the presence of God in the form of, let's say, the warmth of his presence, you know, we, we recognize that we are experiencing you know, the closeness of God, the protection of God. Um, if we experience his presence as light, we know that God is leading us there is uh, a, a direction you know that god is god is saying i'm leading you okay and i'm showing you the way in which you must go so we we associate what god is doing by the way his presence manifests so that is why we must be so keen what if we experience the presence of god as fire Okay, as fire or a sense of burning, uh, it could mean that God is uh, placing something on our hearts which is burning for his kingdom. It could mean that you know uh, it is a cleansing presence of God because we know that our God is a consuming fire. We know that scriptures talk about you know the baptism in the Holy Spirit and in fire. What does the fire do? It does a cleansing work it does a burning up of the chaff okay sin and unholiness in us so whenever we we experience the manifestation of the presence of god uh, in a higher degree or a higher level based on the way the presence of god is manifest we can actually recognize spiritually we can discern and we can say oh this is what the Lord is doing among us. So we must be sensitive to what the presence of God is meant to do in our midst. And Psalm 132, a very, very beautiful passage. There are uh, the I will promises of God over there from verses 13 to 18, where he says that uh, Zion is my dwelling place. And we know from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 12, it tells us that the church of Jesus Christ is the spiritual Zion. We are not the literal Zion, but spiritually we are that place that God has chosen to dwell in. So when God lives somewhere, his presence lives there. And wherever he lives in Psalm 132, there is a promise. I will bless her provisions. I will clothe her with uh, salvation. You know, I will uh, deliver her from her enemies. So there are all these promises and blessings of God that God says, when I am there, I will do this. We can expect if God's presence is with us, we can expect. And that is why we, we desire the presence of God so much, uh, whether it is our small uh, group gatherings, our home, or even in the church, our, our corporate gatherings when we come together. We want God's presence. Unless God's presence is there, no, we cannot experience what God actually wants to do and you know our desire is that god let your presence keep increasing keep increasing in our midst and so i remember last week i mentioned how can we uh, have an increase of the presence of god whenever we take the given presence seriously whenever we acknowledge the given level of God's presence in our midst. Uh, you know, as uh, I, I stated last time, if someone comes to our home and we ignore them, they would never really want to come back again. But what if we entertain them? What if we uh, acknowledge them? 
there are chances that that person would like to come back and so uh, in a similar way what we are saying is when we have god's presence in our midst we have to ask the question okay god is here what can i do to keep him here okay by that i don't mean that god will go away anywhere because he's omnipresent but the levels of the presence that we experience can change so i want a greater presence of god in our midst and when his presence increases you know we have that sensitivity and the discernment we should ask the question what is god doing how is he manifesting is he manifesting as the fire is he manifesting as the light is he manifesting in you know any other different way because then what is happening not only am i sensitive to the fact that god is here but i am also sensitive to the fact that this is what god is doing and so i can partner with god and say okay god more of your presence more of your cleansing presence more of your healing presence more of your uh, you know empowering presence whatever it is whatever god is doing so acknowledging and moving in that direction to see the increase of the presence of god uh, is so very important because his power will be present there and we said you know when we say anointing it is more of the power of god through a person's life but presence is where with or without that person doing anything you know who may be in charge of the the uh, uh, meeting at that time the very presence of god will do its work so there can be healings there can be miracles there can be signs there can be uh, you know uh, the leading of god in amazing ways that people experience just as they enter in the presence of god to emotional issues there are people who testify and they say i just walked in and i i felt that you know my pain which i'm carrying for years it has been wiped away how did it happen the presence of god the presence of god and the bible teaches us that even mountains melt like wax in the presence of god so uh, the strongholds of the devil can be broken there, there are times when you know uh, even i have seen just the presence of god and demons begin to manifest nothing else nobody said anything or did anything nothing the presence of god and you know the delivering presence of god is there and demons are manifesting and they can be uh, you know easily cast out so we have to be sensitive okay is god's presence here what presence is here what is he doing how can i increase it okay so god might lead us and say okay i want you to spend more time in worship so you spend more time in worship then you see the increase of the presence of god so in this manner you know, we have to steward the presence of god and then we will see supernatural manifestations we also touched on the point of glory and we said that what is glory glory is the tangible expression of the presence of god so can we uh can we perceive a presence uh, in a natural way no spiritually we can recognize and discern but glory is visibly expressed okay and that that's what we we see uh, in the bible so uh, you know pillar of fire it could be seen cloud it could be seen so the glory of god is when the presence increases to an extent where you can actually see it and i remember you know sharing that there are many uh, uh, testimonies where people say that you know we saw we saw some oil or coal dust or uh, you know we saw some some precious jewels or we saw something else manifest naturally okay uh, in the presence of god so 
what happens glory is when there is a tangible expression in the natural world of the presence of god okay and we've seen this uh, in the bible you know we see how there was a burning bush what was a burning bush that moses encountered the glory of god he could see it there was a you know there was a, a, a bush and it was burning uh, and god wanted to do something in moses's life and thereby you know the the lives of the israelites and so his glory was manifest and moses had an encounter with god okay so that was how uh, moses saw the glory and we said how israel kept seeing the glory of god you know, through the various miracles that took place but even after all of that you know moses was hungry for the glory of god so we see him crying out in exodus 33 and verse 19 where you know he says god uh, if your presence will not go we will not go and show me your glory he says show me your glory and so you know god covers him and he makes visible to moses his goodness his loving kindness his tender mercies okay and these pass before moses and in this way god manifests his glory so you know god's glory yes it is tangible visible but we also see that a nature of god is revealed so on that day when moses said god show me your glory what was the part of god which was visible his goodness his loving kindness his tender mercies so god's glory is an expression of who he is so does this category you know his goodness his kindness his mercies cover the full expression of the glory of god no we know that god is so much more and so as we keep seeking him and we keep desiring and we say god we have an expectation to see your glory to see your glory you know the beautiful thing is there is no end because god is infinite you know his his capacity is infinite and so when god reveals his glory he's not finished he can continue to reveal parts of him uh, portions of him uh, expressions of him you know endlessly and it it would be glorious it would satisfy us and yet make us hungry for more of who he is and that is how you know the glory of god really is there is actually no end to who god is and what he can do but in what has been expressed so far you know, we see we see all that the bible talks about you know, about the nature of god his majesty his his uh, his awe his goodness his faithfulness his mercy um, and uh, you know even uh, when uh, jesus turned the water into wine what is that a miracle visible glory of god tangible it is seen in john chapter 2 but what part of god's character is seen in that glory we read there that, that uh, jesus made you know he uh, uh, the glory of god was manifest when jesus turned the water into wine what glory he's miracle working he's omnipotent everything is possible by him even water can turn into wine not only that his compassion why would he care about you know a couple who are facing lack but there you see he was concerned so the glory of god or the nature of god who he is what he does what he can do is seen in the glory when god does things right and so why are we saying we want the glory as far as the supernatural is concerned because there will be an expression of the person of god it's and so compared to the presence the glory it's a greater expression you know of who god really is and so that is why we seek after the glory of god and much takes place in the glory of god
we have seen uh, encounters that people have had for example saul on the road to damascus that bright light what is that bright light it's who god is but it's a tangible expression of the person of god and what happened in that kind of glory transformation of an individual okay but for that of course there was a requirement of the response of that individual as well so the god manifests his glory in different ways and we must be open to it and just the way you know we said earlier that presence we've got to be sensitive okay it's not like oh god's presence is there wow you know god's presence was there wow finished we experienced it we are so happy about it but when we go to the next level and we ask the question yes there is a presence what kind of a presence is this what is god wanting to do in our midst today then as let's say if one of us is leading that that time we can move with the flow and see to it that the presence increases we can similarly glory of god we see a manifestation of god's presence and we are sensitive to ask the question god what do you want to do what are you doing i will align myself to what you want to do right now and for us different ministers of god you know maybe some of us here in worship some of us preaching some of us ministering prophetically in different ways when you go into the presence of god ask the question okay i sense the presence why is god revealing this presence what is he wanting to do what should i do to allow him to work in the lives of the people so do what he tells you to do don't do what might hinder the manifestation of the presence sometimes you know we are the ones we we just in in a in a hurry we just end up doing something that disrupts the presence of god or disrupts the glory of god which he wants to manifest okay so we must be very very careful of that very careful of that so i don't know how many of us we have experienced the glory of god in tangible ways whether you know we've seen a light or uh, you know something physical something physical we have experienced uh, but even in those moments god was doing something he had an intention Okay, and ministers of God, uh, we need to discern and let the presence and the glory increase and do what it needs to do. Okay, so that's a little bit more about the presence and the glory of God. So, any questions? Uh, once we answer the questions, I will touch upon the next two points, which are more familiar. That's why it won't make. take too much time uh, so anything about the presence anything about the glory or if you have had an experience of the glory of god a manifestation of some sort you could share Okay, so uh, there's one example which I heard Pastor share about uh, the manifest presence of God. So this was during one of our prayer times here at uh, Bible College, when uh, in 
like even i was there on that day i remember so we were all praying and uh, pastor has this habit of walking up and down and praying so he was praying in one corner and uh, that corner was away from everyone it was away from everyone but as he was praying uh, he shared that he could smell a very beautiful fragrance okay so this was during our five days of prayer we usually have uh, you know uh, Uh, a day of uh, entire day of worship prayer all that going on so one of those days he could smell a sweet aroma in that corner where he was standing and uh, praying uh, uh, actually worship was going on at that time and so he was surprised where is this smell coming from and he noticed you know there was not particularly any window over there or nobody even standing close to him worship leader is you know lost in worship in one corner and people are lost in worship in another corner so he knew that it was something unique like it was coming from actually nowhere the smell so apparently he called one of the pastors and i think uh, it was pastor selina so he called and he asked her like can you check uh, selina can you smell something even she could smell it so he shared about how there was an aroma okay the manifest presence and why would god do that why would god uh, reveal an aroma during worship just to say that you know i am pleased with your worship okay so you see how there is a manifestation but god is trying to say something through the way in which he is manifesting right so we've got to be sensitive okay what is the presence like what is the glory like what is he saying what is he doing as we become discerning of the presence of god we won't just do oh i'm leading worship two songs uh, you know two fast songs three slow songs you, you praise the lord it won't be just that or even ministry no i just have to pray like this and close no 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 spiritually discern what is god say what is god doing what is his presence here trying to accomplish and begin to flow with it okay then we will see more of the supernatural manifesting more testimonies more miracles more healings okay so uh yeah so if there are no questions i will move on but if there's anything at all please to share uh i just want to share about the yes. manifestation of his presence that uh, i felt one day during our friday worship time we usually fast on friday here at babel college and this this one thing that i'm sharing was special for everyone who was gathered there uh there was some work going on in the basement so everyone we were all in the second year classroom and we had the worship actually here and uh, that day uh, one of our classmates saw a black shadow a black shadow that was moving and that same shadow was touching everyone and he he was so sure that that it was jesus that it is his presence and that day i felt someone holding me so tight and there was one uh, one of my other classmate who who couldn't feel anything on his body like a, he couldn't feel his legs and there was one of my other classmate uh she said uh i felt someone tapping on my back i felt someone comforting me and especially that day was so special for us and uh, one of my other classmates saw a black cloud that is uh, covering this whole place uh, even still now today everyone remembers that day everyone remembers that day because we all felt how the, how his presence was manifested and we all were uh, really in a great joy we felt his presence and i think 
uh that day even we were fasting we were not hungry we kept speaking about everyone had some presence everyone had some feeling and we kept speaking about what happened in that uh time for like an hour and one and a half hours i think so i still remember that touch i still remember how powerful his uh, presence is and he he's just great he's just so awesome. thank you jafina so blessed to hear that and uh, that's that's what we want right every time we desire that kind of a presence of god the the work of god in our midst yeah so uh, let's let's press into this and know that you know the more we we uh, seek him uh, we will have uh, his presence and uh, like i just you know think back of the days when as a child my mother used to take me for certain meetings and at that time i hardly knew scripture i hardly knew you know i just knew some bible stories so i i didn't know much but i remember without knowing too much of the word without even knowing uh you know about god and his nature i can recall i would just enter and people will start singing in those meetings and i would be drenched with tears for an hour two hours like for as long as the meeting goes on uh because not that i was repenting of my sins or anything but it was just a loving presence of god you know that just melts your heart that you feel god's love in such a deep way which you don't feel anywhere else and you can't even explain it but it was just the presence we didn't know anyone in these meetings we would rush in rush out but the moment you enter you can tell something is different over here you know so i mean just think about that even a little child can sense spiritually that god is here and that's what we want we want a lot of that more of that you know all the time everywhere and so as god's people let's begin to seek after this and we will see uh, mighty miracles take place now uh, let's just uh, look at the other two keys here and in the next uh, uh, coming sessions we will talk more about the preparation for uh, the manifestation of supernatural so the last two keys are proclamation and action and of course persistence so here uh, proclamation and action simply means that you know many times the supernatural manifests after we release what god is showing us now in the case of jesus if you recall there were times he went to the leper and he said stretch forth your hand and we know jesus uh, shared this about his relationship with the father he said that i only do what i see the father do so when he would have said stretch out your hand obviously it was a prompting of god and when the leper stretched out his hand he was cleansed so there's a proclamation of what we receive from god and there is an action which follows now if that person does not stretch forth his hand i don't think he would have seen the fullness of the healing similarly at the time when jesus meets a blind person what does he do he mixes his uh, saliva with the mud he rubs it on his eyes and he says go and wash you know in the pool of siloam and when this man goes there and he washes he is able to see now so proclamation of what god is showing and an action follows either of these is missing we may not see the results so again we are sensitive what is god showing me now what is the instruction i must give the people so you notice how there is no formula sometimes it is stretch your hands sometimes it is go wash your eyes in the pool sometimes it is take up your bed and walk so unless we proclaim and declare what god is saying unless an action is taken 
you know you don't see what god can do right so sometimes noah has to hear from god and build the ark first you build the ark then god will do so when it comes to the manifestation of the supernatural there are times when you know god might uh, cause us to say or do something and when we do that the results will be seen okay and so we need to be sensitive to that now this proclamation of the word it can come in different ways we could have you know a prophetic inspiration where we are hearing from god and we are releasing that particular word so yes that prophetic word and uh, action follows there's a result or there can be a word of wisdom a word of wisdom is basically a solution okay it's not just telling you uh, this happened that happened no it's a solution do this you see a result so it can be a word of wisdom or the gifts of the spirit are operating and we proclaim the word of god and then the miracle will actually take place okay so even for the red sea to part what happened moses had to raise the rod of god so he told the people right what is going to happen all that uh, and god told moses okay god already revealed his purpose and his instruction to moses he had to act on it so he acted on it what is the action he took he went and stood in front of the sea raised the rod finally the sea parted so this sequence is also something that god can use and we've got to be sensitive you know in those moments when god says yeah do it like this you do you build this or you do that or you you uh, ask people to to raise their hands or uh, ask them to stretch their hand so when they do that action what you are saying is an inspired word and it's followed by the action and then we see the result okay so that's how it works so proclaim boldly proclaim boldly um, and uh, you know you you will uh, see god's work Okay, so now the last one is persistence. Persistence. A beautiful example is, of course, Elijah. Uh, we read about the uh, time when God reveals to Elijah uh, that there is going to be a rain. Okay, but there is no manifestation yet. So again, the word is revealed, but Elijah has to persist. and he persists we read about that in first kings chapter 18 uh, he he prays and he you know uh, waits till he sees the manifestation very interesting he already knows what god wants him to do but it's not happening but he's co-laboring with god not once not twice but seven times so sometimes you know we give up thinking the healing has not happened or uh, you know the marriage has not yet restored or uh, i have not yet got a breakthrough in my job we just leave it we say oh forget it god god said but he he doesn't mean it i don't think he means it but look at elijah the word came he was assured of the word to the extent that he even told ahab it's going to rain get ready go eat and drink be merry it's going to rain but in the natural in manifestation nothing is there no rain but what is this last key which elijah had persistence when he knew the will of god when he knew the word of god what did he do he went up on the mountain put his head between his knees and began to pray seven times how long did each of these seven times take did it take ta- each prayer did it take 10 minutes 1 hour we don't know but the attitude which says i will not give up till i see what god has spoken that is the key right so he stays on focus 
and finally it happens. Even that is just the uh, a cloud as big as a man's fist, hand coming uh, up in the sky. But that is good enough for him to understand. Yes, here is the release of the word which God had promised. And so James, Apostle James, he takes this example from uh, 1 Kings 18. And in uh, James 5.16, he says, Elijah, he was a man like us. But what is the speciality? Fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man. So basically he's saying, earnest, heartfelt prayer. This man did not give up. He trusted God and honestly he prayed. With faith, he made the heartfelt prayer. He didn't give up. So, what happened? God did what he promised. So, earnest, effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. There are results for heartfelt prayers of faith that we make as righteous people. God will answer. Don't give up. Okay? For the supernatural to manifest, if it takes time. We should not say, oh, nothing is happening. Let's give up. No. One of the keys is present. Present. It didn't happen today. No problem. Present tomorrow. Present day after. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So that is the attitude we need. If God has spoken, God will do it. Okay. Don't give up, especially in prayer. Even in the testimony of Paul, you know, he talks about, Travailing. I, I labor in birth till Christ is formed in you. Galatians 4.19. So what is Paul doing? He's yielding himself to a deeper level of prayer where he is suffering in the inner man or he is agonizing. So travailing prayer is a prayer in which you know you Go before God with intensity, intensity. The way Jacob, you know, in Genesis 32, he has a grip on God and he wrestles with God and he says, God, I will not leave you till you bless me. Persistent. It's a spiritual grip on God which says, I will not give up. I will not give up till I see what has been promised in the word of God. Lord, you said in your presence there will be salvation. Lord, we want to see you know, your uh, forgiveness. We want to see your healing. We want to see your deliverance. We want to see every person blessed. We want to see every person filled with peace and joy. So what are we doing? We are going after God with a spiritual intensity, even travail where travail is associated with like you know that deep prayer where you're 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 weeping you're sighing you're groaning uh, you're waiting upon the lord you know with that intense spiritual hunger uh, and you know the manifestation whenever a woman travails uh, in labor what happens she's able to give birth so it's those birth pangs that we go through spiritually after which comes the manifestation. So the point is, one must be willing to persevere, persist, travail. Some things come so quick, but there are many things, even in the supernatural realm, which need to be pursued. So you know, when we talk about the revivals, you will recall, Moravian revival, 100 years people prayed. There are many other revivals, two years, three years, right? Months together, layman's revival, couple of months, people were praying. Oh, why didn't it happen in two days? What if they gave up in two days, right? So we need to persist till we see a move of the Spirit of God upon, you know, the people, the region, the community, the church, the nation. And it is through persistence that even revivals have taken place. So these two last keys, one we said, proclamation and action. And the final is 
or systems. Okay, so let me just see if there are any uh, questions or thoughts before we wrap up today's session. Okay, John has uh, supposed here. How do we explain about prayer as not which, uh, okay, twisting God's arm and travailing in prayer? How do we draw the contrast? Okay, good question, John. So, persistence is different from forcing god to do something that you want and he doesn't want okay so that forcing god for what you want and he doesn't want is called twisting god's arm okay so what is the difference the difference is the will of god okay john so when i know something is in the will of god for me and i am persisting in prayer i will engage in travail, travail will happen. But if it is not the will of God, that's not travail, that's twisting. Does it make sense? Okay, great. So that's the difference, John. So as long as we know something is God's will, then uh, if we are persisting, you know, there's, there's a travail aspect in that. Okay, and travail, uh, I think we all have done it in our first year uh, course, so you understand it uh, pretty well. And also, I encourage you, there's a sermon uh, which was preached, uh, I think, in 2021 about travailing. So you could uh, uh, listen to it, uh, 2021 or 22, I don't know. Uh, but there is a recent sermon as well, which helps us understand how one waits upon the Lord uh, in, uh, you know, intense uh, uh, grip and earnestness towards God. Okay, So if we employ these keys as the Holy Spirit leads, we will surely begin to see a greater manifestation of God's presence. So uh, are there any more questions, opinions, thoughts? OK, so maybe there should be testimonies, isn't it? Since this is the keys to supernatural ministry, and now eight keys we've already completed. So how about we start sharing some testimonies on the stream section and also in the classes uh, as we go forward. Uh, but for today, we will pray and close. So uh, can somebody please pray before we wrap up? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to another name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we had, Lord. But how awesome it is that you are thinking about us and you are loving us beyond imagination, Jesus. We are in such an undeserved place, but because of Jesus, because you took the cross, we are standing here, God. And each and every day you are manifesting your presence in us, Jesus. Each and every day you are loving us more. Each and every day you are drawing us closer, Jesus. Each and every day you are helping us to grow in a relationship with you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. As we are learning about all these supernatural keys, Jesus. Help us to apply it in our life, Jesus. Help us to do that action and faith for you, Jesus, so that people will get saved, so that your glory will be manifested and the and heaven will rejoice, Jesus. Take us and use us. Here we are surrendering each one of us who has gathered here. Take us and use us. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, everyone. Uh, okay, so we wrap up for today and we shall connect next week then. Bye for now. God bless. Thank you.